Exo Blackhawk 2 Pro is a new drone by Exo Company with up to 4K 30 video recording, 48 megapixel photos, 3-way obstacle avoidance, active track and a lot of intelligent flight modes and a great kit. But how does it stack up against DJI competitors? How good is the image quality, range and signal and flying capabilities? The most in-depth review of Exo Blackhawk 2 Pro you'll find in the internet. Let's go! As a disclaimer, I have to say that the EXO company did send me this drone and I do get to keep it, but my review is completely honest and EXO don't get to preview it before it's posted. Of course, the first thing you want to know is how the Blackhawk 2 Pro compares to DJI drones. Here it is next to DJI Mavic 2 Pro, but it's not an apples to apples comparison, so I borrowed DJI Air 2S from my friend to compare the image quality. So guys, let's start off with the photos, Blackhawk is on the left, DJI Air 2S is on the right, we are in 48 megapixel mode, but I think that the Blackhawk really has only 12 megapixels and it kinda stitches 4 pictures together to get the 48 megapixel photo. DJI Air 2S on the other hand has 20 megapixel sensor. When we zoom in 5 times you can clearly see that the DJI has more detail and also more sharpening, digital sharpening which I don't like but overall the DJI's picture looks better. No matter it has 28 megapixels or less information as the spec sheet says. Now we are moving on to the video part of things and as you can see it's only 4K 30 on the Blackhawk and 5.4K on the DJI Air 2S and DJI gives us more detail. Apart from the sharpness and detail levels, we can also see that the gimbal on the Blackhawk is more shaky, the DJI Air 2S is just rock solid. Now let's switch to this and like color on DJI Air 2S and grade it a little bit and I do prefer the colors of the DJI Air 2S as well, but the colors on the Blackhawk also do look pretty good and natural. But of course in terms of detail, 5.4K on the DJI DJI Air 2S is much more preferable. So now let's move on to the kit. First of all, the drone itself is made out of high quality plastic, I have no complaints here, it's pretty sturdy and well built. The gimbal cover design is also pretty good and straightforward and I had no issues with it. Here is the gimbal and the camera itself and two obstacle avoidance sensors. The front legs have foldable mechanism for more compact storage. And right here you can see the Hobson logo, so it's a collaboration between Axo and Hobson drone company. And also here you can see the micro SD card slot. On the other side we see a micro USB port for updating your firmware and transferring files from the drone itself. And also I really appreciate that the cables are protected and braided right there. On the bottom we have a very bright LED light as well as the bottom sensors and I also really like this golden accent on the body of the drone itself. In the kit you'll get a charger, here it is, and it's relatively compact to be honest. And also if you buy 3 batteries kit you'll get 3 of those charging plates which can be daisy chained for faster and more efficient charging. I really like this system because you can get all of those with you or just use one. The batteries themselves are relatively small but they do have some weight in them. And it's 3800 mAh each. Also you'll get 2 USB to micro USB cables, a small screwdriver to tighten the propellers if you need to, of course some paper work is included, additional propellers and some screws, two extra removable sticks for your remote control, three cables for your remote control, micro USB, USB type C and lightning cable, as well as some certificates and some courses, we'll talk about those in the end of the video. Now let's move on to the remote controller, here we have the micro USB port and unfortunately you have no additional space to store your cable, you have to keep it like so. The antennas are really really plasticky and flimsy, I don't like those and you can easily break them if you drop your remote control. The phone holder system is also pretty flimsy, I don't like this style of system and it feels like it can easily break one day. And also it's really uncomfortable to remove those sticks underneath, but at least there is some space to store those. On the remote control itself we have a gimbal control wheel, the photo button, the video record button and a function button which has almost no additional functions. On the back we can see one more Hubsyn logo, but there are no additional buttons unfortunately. But what I really like and miss from my DJI Mavic 2 Pro in the newer models like DJI Air 2S or DJI Mini 3 Pro is this little screen which allows you to see where your drone at, how far it is and what's the height basically and if your phone dies you can return to home using this information which is really handy. The carrying bag itself is made out of very high quality material, it is weather resistant and I even tested it out as well as the drone under heavy rain, they both survived perfectly well. 
And here we have some zipper pouches and spaces for everything you need to take with you. And this bag even has some side pockets as well. Big thumbs up for this bag. So the weight of this drone is 550 grams, which is not a lot, but it's more than 250 grams, which is a limit in most countries, so keep that in mind, guys. The lens itself has f1.8 aperture and about 30 to 35 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view. So now let's talk about the app. The app itself is pretty straightforward and kind of simple it really reminds me of DJI Go app and DJI Fly app as well. Everything is well thought out and you won't have any problems with using this app. It has not a ton of settings in your video and photo modes, but it does what it's supposed to and you have enough of options. And speaking of adjusting your settings, you can set your sharpness level in camera. DJ, I'm saying hello to you, please give us back the ability to adjust the sharpness and the detail level in your drones, please guys. So as you can see here, we have the sharpness levels at plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and plus 10. Plus 10 is garbage and plus 5 as well, but when we zoom in we can see that plus 2 and plus 3 settings look pretty decent and not over sharpened. The same applies to the contrast levels, plus 1 on the left and plus 7 on the right. Plus 7 looks decent in my opinion and if we grade the plus 1 we can get kind of similar results, so my advice is just to shoot at plus 7, maybe plus 5 contrast and you'll get almost a ready to go image in normal color mode. But guys, be careful with the highlights while shooting at plus 7 contrast because you can blow out those highlights pretty easily and it's easier to recover when you shoot with not that high contrast. Also this drone features 200 megabits a second bitrate and I do recommend to set your drone to 200 megabits and just stick to this number. I think YouTube won't allow you to see the difference between 200 MBS and 100 MBS but please guys just stick to the highest number possible because it's never enough in terms of bitrate. There are three main color modes, the standard one, the H-Log which I'm grading right now as you can see and the HDR mode. To be honest, after grading I don't see any differences and advantages, but when we zoom in, I can definitely tell that the HDR looks smeary and soft, the standard looks ok and the H-Log is a bit over sharpened in my opinion, so overall I would stick to the standard color with this drone, especially since it's an 8-bit drone only. One more very frustrating thing is that this drone doesn't have PAL mode, so you cannot shoot at 25 frames per second or 60 frames per second, it only shoots 4K 30, 2.7K up to 60p and 1080p up to 60p as well. But instead, this drone features 64GB of internal storage, but only 57 of those are available for you. But still, it's a very welcome addition and I think every drone in 2022 should have at least 32 gigs on board. Now let's have a look at the lens flare. It's pronounced, it's vibrant and it's saturated, but nothing too crazy guys. The lens flare is okay in my opinion. Also there is a gimbal horizon correction as you can see right here and now let's have a look at the low light capabilities. At 1600 ISO the image quality is still pretty decent in my opinion, we have a slight magenta shift but all in all this footage is pretty much usable. The EXO Blackhawk 2 Pro also features a night mode which raises the exposure a lot and adds a lot of noise reduction. So at the first glance the night mode graded image looks pretty decent, but when you zoom in you can definitely see the difference. It has just a ton of noise reduction and all of the details are just gone. So you can use this mode just to see where you're flying, but to be honest I wouldn't use it in any professional scenario. So here is one more shot at 1600 ISO, yeah the noise reduction is pretty heavy but still we can see some detail in the leaves and in the buildings so overall I can say that it's usable. And guys, I almost crashed this drone because I was flying near the tall buildings, a lot of concrete and metal, so please be careful with flying this drone near some metal objects. As you can see, it has survived, but I was pretty nervous. And here I am, very happy and dancing that the drone is still with me. And one more disadvantage is that sometimes it takes too long to connect to the satellites and you're just standing here and waiting for the drone to connect. So now guys, let's talk about the intelligent flight modes. It has a waypoint mode when you set the waypoints, just the points and the drone flies over those points and you can save this pass and recreate it when you need it. There is an orbit mode, basically it's a point of interest. With DJI drones it's kind of the same, you just set the orbit or the range and it will circle around the object. And also there is a bunch of creative video modes like flight to skies, 360 shooting, comet, droney and auto drifting. Flight to sky mode, it's pretty you know, regular and not very smooth to be honest, 360 rotation is just a 360 video panorama, here we have a comet mode, 
Also not very smooth, but it's decent, let me say. Here is the droney, or just flying backwards, and here is my daughter that helped me out a lot during this shoot. So here is the active track mode test, it's a pretty basic active track, as you can see I'm wearing a pretty contrasty black uh, sweater or hoodie, and as I'm running the drone follows me, and I'm trying to kind of mess things up and try to run away from the drone, and uh, you know, I did it, <laughs> the drone lost me. So basically if I'm going backwards and I appear in the shot, it will catch me back, as you can see right here, and I'm happy to say hello to you guys. So let's move on. The time-lapse mode is only 1080p, the stability is also not the greatest, and the image quality is just horrible. And now let's talk about the flying modes, and the one I use the most is the film mode or the cinematic mode, as we used to say. And in this mode, this drone can fly a bit slower than the DJI Air 2S in its uh, cinematic mode, but much faster than my Mavic 2 Pro, and I do prefer more stable and more uh, slow movement of my Mavic 2 Pro, so this cinematic mode on the Blackhawk is okay, but I wish it was a bit slower. In sports mode, it can reach up to 35 miles per hour. It's a pretty fast drone, to be honest, so no complaints to the speed of this drone at all. Probably the most irritating disadvantage of this drone is that you cannot change any settings. Uh, for instance, ISO or shutter speed or white balance while recording. You have to stop your recording, change the settings and start it again. And what if the sun is going behind the clouds all the time and then goes out again? Very frustrating. And unfortunately it doesn't have zebra or overexposure warning. I wish it was there. Hopefully they will fix those issues with the firmware update. The propellers are also very loud. You can hear those. So just listen for yourselves. It's at 40 meters above me. And all in all, you can still hear this drone a little bit at 150 meters. That's a lot. It's a very noisy drone. The gimbal of Blackhawk 2 Pro can be tilted upwards for about 45 degrees, and you can get those types of shots with this gimbal. It's a pretty welcome addition. So after using the active track, hyperlapse, and a lot of different modes like cinematic mode and sports mode and all that, my battery life came down to 10% and I was flying for 25 minutes straight. And I think that the real battery life of 25 minutes is a very decent result for this drone. So basically you have more than an hour with three batteries. The remote control also charges your phone and will last for about fully charged three or four maybe five batteries. So my suggestion is to recharge all of the batteries and the remote control itself after flying. Now let's talk signal transmission. They say that it's HD but it looks like 240p or maybe 360p. It's not HD to be honest. So the DJI drones are much much better in this term, you can clearly see the image, and with this drone you just look at the number of pixels basically. The flight range. On the website they say 5 miles with a line of sight and with no obstacles between you and the drone. And also there is a feature of return to home. But in my real world test, in a very crowded city as you can see, I was flying at about 300 meters height and about 1 kilometer distance and I lost the signal as you can see. It returned and flew towards me, so the return to home is working, but still you gotta be careful and keep the line of sight with your drone. When it was coming back to me, it also was losing the signal from time to time, but still it was moving towards me, and it was reconnecting to my remote control, so all in all, I was a bit nervous, but it turned out to be good. So now let's talk obstacle avoidance, as I said before, it has front, rear and downwards obstacle avoidance sensor, but there is a catch, guys, they don't work properly out of the box. It asks you to calibrate those, but when you click the link, at least on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, it just moves me to the website and there is no further things to do and I just couldn't find a way to calibrate those, but you can force them to work, sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't, and here is the test of the obstacle avoidance system. So first of all, let's test the brake function when your drone just stops when it sees the obstacle and here it is working pretty good now let's try it with the backward sensors it's also working but now it almost crashed <laughs> so guys it's not that convenient and not that safe i wouldn't rely on this system to be honest so now let's watch another test and i almost crashed it into myself it didn't uh, you know recognize me but then it flew around me so i turned on the bypass function and here it is with the light pole once again it does work but i'm not really confident in using this system it does work sometimes sometimes it doesn't uh, all in all 
it doesn't work all the time, you have to force uh, it to work and <laughs> I hope they'll fix it with the firmware as well. And here is the situation when I lost the signal completely, the obstacle avoidance was turned off, but when the drone tried to fly to the home point it just stopped and I was able to move it back so it didn't crash, it tried to fly towards the building as you can see, but it didn't crash so the obstacle avoidance does work and I was able to get the signal once again and to turn to the right and to fly around this building. So it does work, but it's not that reliable to be honest. So finally guys, let's talk about the price. On the EXO's website we can see that the base model is at $800 and the 3 battery kit is $1080. To be honest, that's a bit expensive for this drone. If they fix everything, maybe it will cost this amount of money, but also you do get a ton of free training courses for $200, for $50, $50 as well, some presets and all that. So probably it adds up to the cost and it's getting more, um, you know, sweet for you to buy, but it's still tough to compete with DJI. So let's have a look at DJI products. Also with three batteries in the kit. Here we have DJI Air 2S Fly More Combo for $1300, so $220 more expensive, but it's totally worth it, trust me guys. And also we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro, also with the RC remote with a screen and three batteries for almost the same price. To conclude, Exo Blackhawk 2 Pro is a very capable drone and I was surprised with some aspects of it. I really appreciate the ability to tweak sharpness and contrast of your image. DJI, once again, you have to add it to your drones. The battery life of Blackhawk 2 Pro is also decent, the image quality is okay, but I'm so used to the great quality of DJI drones that it feels a little bit as a downgrade. 57 gigs of internal storage is a very welcome addition as well, overall flying experience is good too, but on the other hand there is a number of issues, like weird performance and unreliability of obstacle avoidance, absence of PAL mode with 25 and 50p recording, no ability to change settings while recording, which is really frustrating, only 8-bit recording as well, no zebra or overexposure overlay. But those issues can be addressed in the future firmware update and I hope Axel will fix those after watching my review. But also there is a hardware problem like very noisy propellers and flimsy plastic remote and antennas. And finally, the price is higher than I expected from this drone. And it's really high to justify picking this one against DJI Mini 3 Pro or DJI Air 2S. The money savings from the Exo Blackhawk 2 Pro won't cover all of the issues above in comparison with DJI competitors. So what do you think guys? Is Exo Blackhawk 2 Pro worth a try in your opinion? And do you want to see more drone reviews on my channel? Share all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons. And of course the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.